The beautiful thing about stand-up comedy is that it's such a sublime alchemy to take one's personal pain and transform that into public pleasure. Thank you so much for watching this video and today I have the pleasure of introducing you to one of my comedy mentors and heroes, one of the best comics in the world, Jackson Perdue. What is your advice to some young person out there who wants to start doing stand-up but has no clue? Well, you know what? It took me a long time to realize this. It's not about the jokes. You know, people labor on the jokes and the material. It's not, the, you've got to have good material, no question about it. But it's more about, it's not what you say so much. The audience doesn't go by what you say. It's how you make them feel. You know who's getting all the parts in TV and stuff? All these alternative comics like Janine Garofalo and, you know, all the people who bomb in a straight comedy club, the people doing set up punchline. So it's not the joke so much, but you got to really work on your personality, your, your, your humanity. That's what you're trying to, you know, your own brand of craziness people want to tune in. And they don't have to have anything in common with you. Like, you know, Richard Pryor did that. He got to his truth. People identified with it because they identified with the truth. They didn't have to live in the ghetto, you know. A lot of suburban white people love Richard Pryor because they knew, hey, this crazy motherfucker is telling his truth, you know. So, so it's about telling your truth expressing yourself, being you, getting your essence out there, because it's not the jokes. After the show, people come up to you, man, I like that joke that you did. And you didn't even do the joke, the other guy did. So they don't remember what you said, they remember how you made them feel. You know, read, study, you know, talk to some people, work on, get deep, you know, get, get you know, that's what you want to bring up there, that's what you're selling up there is you, your ideas, your thoughts. The more you got to, you know, the deeper your well, the more you have to draw from, right? I mean, you know, I love that's this. That's for any artist. That's for any artist. And just love itself. Uh, you know, I love this saying that one can only love as deep as they are. You know, can a shallow person love deeply? I don't know. You know, I don't think so. You can only, so you only have, you can only give what you have, right? You can't give what you don't have. So if you have no depth, no ideas, no thoughts, no character. You, you can't give that to anybody across the footlights, right? Right. You know, uh, so, you know, work on yourself. Get good with yourself, you know? So that, that's it. Not, not the jokes. It's not the jokes. It's you. You know, smiling is a big thing. Looking like you're having fun is a big thing. Having fun. Having fun. It's so corny, but I always say, you know, fun is the first word in funny. So, you know. You gotta have, because people came there to have fun, you know. But you gotta have, you gotta express your truth. That's first and foremost, because sometimes your truth might not be fun. You would just might be a crazy motherfucker like Sam Kennison. But people enjoy that. Look at that dude go off, man. That's fucking entertaining. That is entertaining, <laughs> you know. But if that's true, don't fake right. it, you know. But if that's your, you know, a lot of people, their whole comedy thing is angst. Well, go with it, you know. Be an anxious motherfucker, you know. Mm -hmm. But go all the way with. Who, if that's you, do you. You know, that ain't gonna work for me because I ain't anxious. Who were the um, comedians at the store that really impacted you? The people that I watched, uh, you know, and I, and, and I watched every night because I, I was living with my mother and her husband at the time in a very small place, so I had to get out every night. So I'd go to the comedy store every single night just to get out of the house. And you have to watch it all. I'd watch, I learned more from the people who are making mistakes, who are bombing, than I did from guys who were killing. I learned what not to do, like, hey, that don't work. You know, they don't get mad at the crowd and say they suck, that don't work. Let's talk about that for a second because that seems to be the, the standard now with a lot of comics. It's like they come out, they don't have a set, they're not prepared, but they immediately go to attack the audience. Because they're inexperienced and they've got nothing and they get scared of it. It's, it is going up there naked, you know. If you, you don't have anything, well, that's, what, that's what happens. Fear comes in and you're gonna go into that attack mode. My other favorite um, Jackson Purdue line is the acronym of fear. Oh, fuck everything and run? Yes. Yeah, well, you know, again, there's only love and fear, right? So my thing now in development is I'm just trying to connect. 
I'm just trying to look people in the eye and really connect and not talk at them, you know, and, and, and not just throw the material out there. But again, you've got to have good material because sometimes the crowd ain't playing that, okay? And they just, <laughs> and you've you got to have the jokes. You've got to have the jokes, you know, because you could bring your own stream of consciousness alternative thing up there and they ain't hearing it. They just ain't even from your world. But jokes are jokes. This is a setup, this is a punchline, and people get the jokes. He might even not like you. Go, that guy was funny, but not my style. But hey, he was funny. He wasn't just up there blabbing about his, you know, his bullshit. You know, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I've shared on these vlogs before of some of the stuff that you helped me with. And one of the greatest tools you gave me when I was doing stand up was to turn down my laugh meter. Yeah, and you have to do that. Like last night, I was telling you, I worked at the Laugh Factory at 1 a.m. There were like, you know, I think there were 12 people there, and they had been there all night. You know, I'm very, I'm dead last. And that's what you got to do. With a small crowd, I always tell them, I don't know about penises, but I know with audiences, size does not matter. <laughs> so you can get a full crowd who just flatlines on a Saturday night, and you could have, uh, you know, an intimate crowd of a dozen people who are really on board and get it. And that happened to me twice this week at the Laugh Factor. But, you know, during the week, small crowds, and they were great. So, yeah, you just got to go up there and, uh, again, the fourth agreement, do your best. Right. And you, turn down your laugh meter. Because turn down your laugh meter. But if you, again, if you just do your best and surrender everything else, then all the other mental chatter goes out your head. Oh, what, it's going to be like this? You know what, well, that's asking yourself negative what-if questions in the future. You know, this might happen, this and. No, forget all that. Take that even out of the equation. Just show up and do your best. You know, if you bomb, you did your best under the circumstance, right? So if you do your best, you know, with everything in life, that's the only question you got to ask yourself. Did I do my best? And that is being of service. Being of service. That's, that's what I love a yeah. quote from Snoop Dogg. He said, uh, don't be nervous, be of service. <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. Because it is a service. You know, you are... Uh, servicing, you are contributing to humanity by making people laugh. And I always say the beautiful thing about stand up comedy is that it's such a sublime alchemy to take one's personal pain and transform that into public pleasure. I mean, there's nothing more sublime than that, right? You know, one of the things that I love about you, Jackson, is that you've been doing this such a long time, and I never hear you tire. It. No, because I love it. I love it still, you know, and it's part of my service. And again, I lead a surrendered life, so I don't trip. You know, like the people say, oh, you've been a struggling comic. You know what? Struggling is mostly emotional, and I don't struggle. Well, the That's thing is, you're successful. You have, you have, no, you have I, had, I, well, no, no, uh, let, well, hear me yeah, out okay, first. Hear right. me out. You have succeeded in that you get to do what you love every night. That's success. No, that's success. I mean, we can, you know, we can talk about material things, but right. you have been successful for 40 years. Yeah. You have done what you love. How many people out there never get to enjoy what they do? They hate it. Right. They're miserable. You go into the store, you order stuff, people are in there and they hate what they're doing. They're just getting a paycheck. When I see those people, I always say, you know, I think you need something else. I think you need to find what you like because this is killing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and most people are like that. Yeah, certainly. So you have been successful. You have been able to take your, uh, take your skills and travel the world. No, that's true. But uh, you know, after you've been doing this a while, you always periodically have to redefine what success means to you. When you first get here, success means having your own show and being rich and famous. Then after a while, success just means working. Mm -hmm. Then let me get some work. My only show business aspiration now is just don't ever have to get a day job, you know. Then that's, I'm good. And I haven't had a day job in, you know, 30-something years. So literally thousands of people who have come and gone and fallen to the wayside. And, you know, here I still am. Remind still my, standing. Well, you know what my thing is? I, I the identify with the last scene in the movie Papillon when he's escaping off the island and he's on that bunch of coconuts tied together in a bag and he says, I'm still here, you bastards. <laughs> and that's how I am. I'm still here, you bastards. You know, they can't get me to quit.
because I would not quit. And I've always had that. Like when I first started out, and I, again, I used to go to the comedy store every night, right? So when Richard Pryor came in, it would be packed. So the doorman who ran the place, they tell me, hey, you know, you can't come in tonight. You know, Pryor's here. I'm like, hey, fuck that. You know, that's, that's my man, right? So I'd sneak in. They would kick me out. I would I already snuck back in before they got in. And I remember them kicking me out for like the third time. Then I'm not going to tell you again. You've got to get out of here. And I remember telling myself, you know what? If they want to get rid of me, they're going to have to put me in the trunk of the car, <laughs> drive me across the state line, drop me off in the desert, and I'll be walking back. You know, they ain't getting rid of me, you know. And they got that message because the people who threw me out uh, ended up being my helping, you know, with Mitzi and get me the job working there. Because wow. I, I just was not taking no for an answer. Wow. That's all there was to it, you know, so. Speaking of Richard Pryor, this was a big aha moment and teachable moment for me in that I remember sitting at the, at the, in the main room at the comedy store, and he was do he was there for like a week or whatever. I remember just sitting there watching him. He was crafting some new bits, and he was dying on stage. And people were heckling him and giving him a hard time. And I remember turning around, going, "That's Richard Pryor. How could they do that?" And then I sat there. I said, "Everybody bombs. Everybody, Everybody. bombs, and you're never immune to it at any time. No matter how famous, you know, just some nights it just ain't gonna happen." But again, you just go back to, did I do my best? And then you're okay. So, you know, again, that fourth agreement has helped me out so much. Yeah, yeah. prior, when, you know, it was so sad to see him because you know, I remember what, you know, the later days when he was sick, he would go on, they'd introduce him, he'd get a standing ovation, he'd go on, bomb his ass off for 20 minutes or whatever, silence, and then get a standing ovation coming off. But I was okay with that because at that time he was sick and he was coming in for the applause and the love, and he had earned that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that was his, like, going to the fucking clinic, getting some love that he had put in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had no no bad feelings about, yeah, go yeah, get the love, Richard. Carry That's, him on yeah, yeah, stage. yeah, and that was uh, really down. healing. Who else can go to a place and just start getting a lot of this? Hey, right. you're a wonderful guy, you know? Everybody needs that, right? right. Sure. And everybody needs that. Oh, you're saying these people hate their jobs because they don't get any of this, man. Hey, good bags. You can put that stuff in the bag. Really great, you know. Great memo, you know. People don't get that. Yes. And, you know, we get that every day, you know. Like when I work in Vegas, I have this friend of mine, and uh, she likes to gamble and do all the party and stuff. When I work in Vegas, I'm like Howard Hughes. I just stay holed up in my room. I only leave my room to eat and do the show. Uh, I don't gamble. I don't really drink, whatever. Uh, but she likes to go out and do all that stuff. And I told her, look, man, I already did the most exciting thing you could do. All right. I already got up in a room full of people was the most special guy in the room. And I got that good feeling. And if that was a ride here in Vegas, do you know how long that r line would be to get on that ride to do what I just did? Okay. I just did that thing. So everything else is going to be anticlimactic for me, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're good at something, you just keep doing it because you're good at it, right. and it feels good to do feels that. Good. I loved having you, Jackson. Well, thank thank you. you so much. This was so good, well, so I'm glad good. To and make it, and yeah. I just want you to know that you bless so many people. I mean, I know what you've done for me, but I know that you are a giver. That you share with all the comics that you come in contact with, and I know that um, you change their lives. Well, you know what? Let me give you credit. Uh, for a line that I got from you, and then I and I write in my journal a lot, and that is, I am blessed and highly favored. That's right. You know, so uh, you you express that that way to me, and and that's the way I feel. I'm I'm blessed and we highly, are blessed favored. And You're blessed and highly favored. Every single day. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Please remember, uh, do you have a website? Yeah, Jackson Purdue Comedy uh, dot com. Check out Jackson's website, jacksonpurduecomedy.com, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Common Sense Mamita.